this day, October 22nd, 2018. Please call the roll. Mr. White? Mr. Case? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Mr. Johnson? Present. Mr. Laborn? Here. Mr. Luna? Here. Mayor Orr? Here. Dr. Rennie? Excused. Mr. Royball? Here. Mr. Shaner? Here. Two members are absent. We do have a quorum, Mayor. Hey, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Consent agenda. All agenda items listed with the designation of CA are considered to be routine items by the governing body and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a member of the governing body so requests and support by two other members is received. Any item removed from the consent agenda will be considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Thank you. Are there any items that any member wishes to have removed from the consent agenda? Madam Mayor. Mr. Laborn. Number 10. Concur. Concur. Okay, number 10 has been removed from the consent agenda for the purpose of the public. That is the resolution designating Art Cheyenne as the local arts agency for the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Are there any other items? Any other items? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion with the... I, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Luna, seconded by Mr. Johnson. All those in favor of the motion with the exception of item 10. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item is number six, vouchers. Madam Mayor, I do have a conflict. Mr. Rebel. As he exits, do I hear a motion on the vouchers? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Johnson, seconded by Mr. Case. Discussion by the public? Discussion by council. All those in favor of the vouchers, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance Most second. Act. Mr. Weibel, excuse me. Ordinance second reading, amending Chapter 12.24, Art in Public Places, of Title 12, Street, Sidewalks, and Public Places of the Code of the City of Cheyenne, Wyoming, pertaining to the Art in Public Places Committee. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Any discussion by the public? Okay, hearing none, Mr. Case. Number 10, Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to adopt, and I so move. Second. It's, we're on number 7, Mr. Case? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Same. Okay, it's been moved uh, by Mr. Case, seconded by Mr. Roybal. Discussion by Council? Discussion by Council. Okay, hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance second reading, annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, a portion of the west half of the west half of section 17, township 14 north, range 66 west, of the 6th principal meridian, Laramie County, Wyoming, located west of and adjacent to Powderhouse Road, north of Spirit Lane. All right, is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Discussion by the public. Okay, hearing that, Mr. Weibel. Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Services Committee is to approve on second reading, and I so move. Second. Moved by Mr. Weibel, seconded by Mr. Johnson. Discussion by council? Discussion by council. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance first reading pursuant to section 2.2.1 zoning map amendments, section 5.1.2 zoning districts established, and section 5.1.3 official zoning map of the Unified Development Code, changing the zoning classification from county A1 agricultural and rural residential to MUR mixed use residential emphasis for a portion of the west half of the west half of section 17, township 14 north, range 66 west of the 6th principal meridian Cheyenne, Wyoming, located west of and adjacent to Powderhouse Road, north of Spirit Lane. This item is referred to Public Services Committee. Resolution designating Arts Cheyenne as the local arts agency for the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Any discussion by the public? If you would, uh, for anybody uh, addressing council, if you could please state your name and who you represent. Thank you. Madam Mayor, Bill Lindstrom, 3621 Pioneer Avenue. I'm also Executive Director of Arts Cheyenne. I'm here to answer questions and to provide some comment about this MOU with the city. And uh, if there's questions first, I'm happy to answer those. Or if you'd like me to say a few words about the organization and about our intent uh, with this MOU, I'm happy to do that as well. Thank you. If you'll stand by, I think what we'll do is um, just wait for questions. Uh, 
there was a presentation made to Finance Committee. Uh, do I hear, well, first of all, is there any other public comment on this matter? Any other public comment? Okay, hearing none, Mr. Case. Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to adopt, and I so move. Second. Moved by Mr. Case, seconded by Mr. Johnson. Are there questions from Council of Mr. Lindstrom? Madam Mayor. Mr. Laborn. Well, I wasn't at the Finance Committee, so I'd <coughs> like to hear uh, to the presentation from the group. Thank you. I'll make it brief, Ma uh, Madam Mayor, through you, uh, Councilman Laborn, uh, just to reiterate, the organization, Art Cheyenne, is a 501c3 organization uh, that is uh, a nonprofit uh, that uh, is both programming and policy, not policy, but obviously we're, we're a planning organization as it relates to arts development and arts execution in the city of Cheyenne. Uh, we're made up of, of 12 board members and a part-time staff. Our organization has been in communication with the city over the last year and a half when Councilman Johnson brought to us the idea of this organization uh, perhaps engaging with the Art and Public Places Initiative and perhaps providing services related to community development, community guidelines, community planning as it related to public art. Public art being, of course, a pretty broad environment uh, from a community development standpoint, we feel that the organization is the perfect organization to engage with the city through an MOU to provide this service to the city uh, to plan for and expand on already a pretty vibrant public art environment that's in the community. So uh, happy to answer other questions about the specifics if you desire. Thank you. Any other questions? Madam Mayor, um, Mr. Bill, Bill, could you explain the MOU that's attached here as attachment A? Right. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, through you, Councilman Labor, the MOU is designed to be a uh, foundation document that engages this organization <coughs> with the city as it relates to this particular initiative. Uh, the organization uh, envisions a much broader environment for the planning of public art in the community, but it feels that this MOU is the first step in the development of a relationship between the city and the nonprofit organization, which will help uh, with, I guess you could say, our strategic planning, making sure that we're taking all the proper steps as it relates to the city's needs, the city's mission as it relates to quality of life improvements at a community level, and is then followed by additional steps which will be more specific about what it is that we'll deliver on behalf of the city. Uh, that could be very specific initiatives as it relates to public art development, and it could certainly be broad type services, including such things as a, as a database of the cultural assets that already exist guidelines for a public arts programs, again, services like that, that have yet to be defined but would be through a future contract that probably would need to be developed with a specific community or a government organization, government department. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Other questions? <clears throat> uh, thank you, Bill. Um, I would refer uh, the members of the council to uh, the, the MOU and item B4 which is uh, the city shall provide a contract within the community uh, recreation and events department to coordinate with the organization for assistance as required including but not limited to developing guidelines for projects submission of work projects and implementation of the requirements of this MOU so a little bit of history here that might be useful is the fact that we had an art and public places program that is we're in the process of amending here uh, earlier in that ordinance but really the point is that um, over the years a program that began um, I would say in uh, 96 98 um, with some uh, fifth penny money uh, gradually expended those funds and became dormant at the same time, our art scene certainly wasn't becoming dormant. It was becoming vibrant. And I just want to mention this because I know that the sponsor of this uh, matter is leaving the council. But in the next budget cycle, I think it's very important that we keep in mind that if Art Cheyenne can bring us good projects, bring us community support, um, I think it'll be res our responsibility to assist them in doing that financially. So I'm not sure how many people are aware of uh, the various initiatives that went on. 
I'm very proud of those. I'm, I'm particularly proud of uh, the Martin Luther King Memorial that's in Martin Luther King Park that was a joint project of the community and the Art in Public Places program. So we matched funds and created a lasting legacy there that I, I'm very proud of and I think speaks well for our community. So um, I'm very pleased uh, that this group of people, and I was discussing this with Bill earlier, uh, really some high quality people that, that have a lot of uh, responsibilities and connections in our community can assist us in uh, doing those projects as we can uh, to enhance uh, those artistic efforts in a variety of ways. So um, I certainly speak in favor of this. I think it's a, it's a step we need to take, but I did want us to understand that it's a, a commitment that is going to require some real attention. I'm sure that, uh, that <clears throat> our city staff can do that, and I hope that we can involve uh, the artists in the community and support them uh, in a meaningful way, and I look forward to uh, your continuing participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other um, further comments? Mr. Yes, Cook? Madam Mayor, uh, through you to Mr. Lindstrom. I guess I'm, I'm just curious, uh, and again, uh, much, much like Mr. Laybourne, I wasn't at uh, Finance Committee, but I guess I'm just curious about how you envision, because um, I'm, I'm really sort of intrigued about the part of the, of the MOU where it discusses partnering with the uh, planning and development and, and that process as far as whether it be in infill development or new development uh, not to put you on the spot but uh, uh, what what are you hoping I, I mean are you what are you hoping to accomplish through that I mean I'm I'm, I'm I, I mean I'm guessing that uh, uh, you want to be able to be a partner which I think you should be as far as when new development is discussed uh, you can help identify places where maybe there could potentially be some some public art or some things that I just I would like you to have the opportunity to elaborate on sort of how you feel You can you could be a, a valuable partner in that process Mr. Madam Mayor through you uh, Councilman Cook I could wax poetic. I could get philosophical, but you don't want that. I'm almost sure um, so trying to answer your question not with generalities, but with some specifics Everything is aspirational. We, we absolutely believe that, that we have a public art environment that is uh, certainly defined by the public spaces that in many cases are city-owned, right. county-owned. That is a great foundation for public art to exist on. And maybe it's time for, of course, an additional uh, phase of energy to be applied to that environment not to look into the private development environment or some of the other ways that you can engage public art in a community they're all at play no question about it what defines a community and its persona as it relates to the cultural viewpoint of it is defined by a mix of public spaces and private spaces with perhaps all kinds of things going on architectural activity art obviously what we're trying to do in the course of this process is to best understand what we currently have, where it exists, the role of placemaking in any community development type of, of environment and, and planning process, and to put perhaps a cultural flavor to that, perhaps an arts flavor if you want to be more specific. I think every successful community that you look at around the world for that matter has an engaging public art environment. Any community can do it. Any community should aspire to it. This community should aspire to it. We feel that Art Cheyenne is the organization to help that community, help the community realize what it possibly can do with this, this type of, a, of an environment to please people who live here as well as please people who visit here. So, again, I'm probably did exactly what I said. I didn't want to do no, be general about it, but yeah. at the same time, I, I think we're, every, everything is going to be looked at in, in terms of how we can best uh, provide for a public art environment that is right size for this community. Uh, just a follow up, Mayor, through you. Um, so it's not going to be necessarily a situation where um, 
every park or public space or something like that. I mean, you're not going to be coming in saying, you know, we have to mandate, we have to, we have to set aside, but I mean, you're, we have to set aside land for, for X, Y, and Z to do this or set aside space, but it's, it's just more as you just sort of give us the expertise of, Hey, something like this could be, could be good at X, you know, here's the, you know, this is what the feasibility of doing something like that would be. Right. Is that Madam Mayor, through you, Councilman, I, I totally agree with the concept that uh, everything is a play, but they are, at the same time, everything doesn't need to be a play. It doesn't need to be a requirement. It doesn't right. need to be, in, in, I guess, respect to a guideline, a, uh, a requirement that something be done in the space, public or otherwise. I think you personally, uh, you end up with mundane art. I think you get pedestrian art. You don't necessarily get the most creative environment that way. Our goal would be to step past that sort of standard operating procedure as it relates to public art and define a new level of what first is public art, where it should be, why it should be, and certainly to create guidelines that aren't necessarily, um, you know, restrictive, but certainly are opportunistic in what they're trying to achieve. Just identifying what could happen, not necessarily hemming people into what is required to happen. Thank you. That's you. Know, you definitely answered my question. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Are there other questions? Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. Next item is number twelve. Resolution declaring Cheyenne a city of kindness and generosity. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Any discussion by the public? Good evening. Please let us know your name. Jerry Maria Johnson. Um, I don't know who exactly is opposed to this. I read that there were two and one uh, unsure. I want to say that this is a reasonable measure. It's not about personal beliefs or political position. It is about the people. And the people want to make their stand on this issue crystal clear. And those who are opposing this are standing in the way of that. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions of Ms. Johnson? Any questions? Okay. Hearing none, thank you very much for coming tonight. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? All right. Mr. Roybal. Madam Mayor. <clears throat> the recommendation of the Public Services Committee is to adopt, and I so move. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Webble, seconded by Mr. Johnson. Discussion by Council? Any discussion by Council? Hearing Madam none. Mayor. <laughs> Mr. Luna. Um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, on the thought that you can't make everybody be kind and generous. I mean, that's, that's just not happening. And uh, I like to I like to think of the the golden rule: do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And uh, to me, that would be more than uh, enough. I don't think we need anything else than that. And everybody, I mean, everybody lives by the golden rule. I would hope. But uh, I'm going to be a no on this one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Luna. Any other discussions by the public? Or by the council, I'm sorry. Discussion by council. Madam Mayor. Yes, Mr. Laborn. <clears throat> well, I speak in favor of this resolution uh, because of how it came about. Um, certainly, uh, when the Compassionate Cheyenne group came forward with a uh, proposal that was uh, in use elsewhere and internationally as well that uh, seemed to be um, interpreted by some council members and members of the community as something that came from outside and that had political implications in specific actions on an international and national level. So uh, certainly if that was the case and that was the belief uh, that's not what we're talking about tonight. What we're talking about tonight 
is what exists in this room and in this community every day and something that I think we're very proud of and is something that a spirit that we certainly want to acknowledge and enhance and I can just say on a personal level uh, when this resolution came forward it made me think and it made me think about how difficult something as basically simple as compassion and respect and kindness and generosity is it can get wrapped up in some really difficult political situations but certainly there can be nothing wrong with this resolution and stating the basic fact that exists in our community because over and over again we see that those results happening with city staff with our with our uh, public interactions with the commitment of the community to projects with all the human service agencies these things happen every day and they happen in a way that that I happen to be very proud of so certainly uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with acknowledging that. In fact, I think it's something we should acknowledge. And when we go down the road here a few months or a few years, I think we'll see that no one is trying to force anything on anybody. We're just talking about the importance of these things in our community and how our community does respond, and I expect will respond in the future. So I certainly hope that if there are individuals here that are against this resolution, uh, they speak up and tell us why because I can't see anything here that isn't factual and positive for our community thank you thank you mr. Laborn other discussion by council did you want to go no. first or no I didn't know I, yeah, it's I, up to the chair to decide no, I didn't. other discussion by council madam mayor mr. case this shouldn't be that tough, but frankly it is. And I just fear that um, any governing body that goes down the slippery slope of, of legislating kindness, legislating generosity, and sitting there and, and making <laughs> mocking comments while we're discussing it is certainly, <laughs> or, or mocking faces while we're discussing this. I just don't think we should be in that business. And I also don't believe that kindness and generosity are things that we should be braggadocious about. It's something that we should just be inherent in, in, in our individuality. Certainly, some words on, on a piece of paper are not going to deter an individual that wants to go commit a less than kind act. And because of those points, um, not because I am um, probably going to be referred to as an expletive that has been used in the introduction of this legislation. I'm, I'm going to be a no on this for those reasons. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion by council? Discussion, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> so, uh, as far as the rundown <clears throat> that I gave at Public Service Committee, and the reason, as Mr. Laybourne alluded to, is that when the compassionate Cheyenne crew came up to speak um, there was references to a website and references to a pledges and references uh, to recognizing all religions and you know there was just multiple facets uh, the reason I did what I did and as far as the expletives was basically to get a reaction because I knew that that was the only way that I was actually going to get the truth spoken and so what I did is I fished I put it out there that um, I was looking for what everybody's actual opinions were on it so uh, when Austin called me and asked me what I was thinking about bringing forward, I told him I was going to bring this forward. And yeah, I did say what I said, basically to get people to actually come out and, and offer what their uh, true sensibilities were. If you look at the current resolution as it's drafted, when Brad wrote his, uh, his editorials in the paper, I read them. I read the um, email from the pastor, and I read his, letters to the, or his letter to the editor. I read all the letters to the editor, the Facebook comments and everything else. And basically anything that people actually feared um, in the original resolution, I posted it many times just to get feedback from the community on uh, what they felt uncomfortable with. And so I went before, um, after you know, about four weeks of uh, 
dialogue with individuals around the community. I presented it to the Compassionate Cheyenne uh, crew and said, here's uh, what I make a recommendation that this is making people really, really nervous. And so with your, I was like, the first question I asked them was, um, by removing yourself from the Compassionate Charter, does it cause you uh, the loss of any kind of grant applications or grant funding or any funding, you know, for you to do any kind of positive work? And they said, no, it did not uh, cause them any uh, financial hardships or uh, pursuant of grants. And I said, okay, well, then I'm going to make the recommendations. And I gave them a list of seven that said, you know, council feels uncomfortable signing a pledge, that there's pieces in this that they don't feel comfortable with signing on and so we need to get rid of the fact that there has to be a, a signed pledge. I say council is nervous about the references on the website. The website needs to go. I say is there any hardship amongst your organization to actually remove yourself from the compassionate charter and bring this forth? Just I say if there's so much worry when you guys come to speak in front of council that you say you're autonomous are you willing to you know, prove you're autonomous and actually remove yourself from the compassionate charter as well as other things that were on the um, original resolution? Uh, compassionate Cheyenne had their uh, board meeting on a Monday and then Ed and I met on a Thursday and Ed said, Richard, um, it is the view of uh, Compassionate Cheyenne that uh, we do not take any of your recommendations and it is not our goal. It is no longer on our for lack of a better term, bucket list to uh, get a resolution uh, through city council. At that point, I said, well, it still matters to me to show that we actually care about the place we live in. And I knew that this was a fluff piece. I knew that this was just words and, I, and everything that's been set up here. I already expected these arguments. And so when I drafted this, I basically made all the scary stuff go away and made this as the newspaper so lightly referred to it as generic. And that's exactly what I gave them. Everything that, uh, from all the dialogue that I had heard, seen, or anything else, I basically was like, all right, it's scrapped, and took it down to the brass tacks and actually made it um, generic. It's interesting that I actually pay attention to other things amongst the community. As I mentioned at uh, public service last week, you know, to hear Holly Frontier commercials about them promoting, you know, not necessarily how much. Uh, revenue they bring into the city but they actually on their commercials say that they care about their city. I heard the same thing about volunteerism on a recent uh, Wyoming Bank and Trust commercial. I've read mission statements from tech firms that are in the city promoting volunteerism you know amongst their employees uh, to you know take a stand in their community and volunteer you know so when I uh, bring this forward and say I do it for the economic factors of it and when, you know, like what was mentioned in the newspaper about Wallet Hub having, you know, saying that Wyoming's the fourth most compassion or excuse me, um, uh, charitable state in the union. Well, I could say, okay, is that per 100,000 people? Because that just means four people have to donate. And all of a sudden we are looking greater than any other uh, state that has a larger population. So when it comes down to it, I, I you know, a couple of weeks ago when we dealt with the animal shelter issue, I actually... Um, told Austin I was happy to see that the um, piece on the animal shelter had actually been picked up by the New York Times and uh, showcased it. You know, granted it was through the Associated Press, but when you uh, showcase that you care enough about your community and it gets out there, you don't know where the AP or uh, Reuters or anybody else is going to pick up these stories and which newspapers it's going to be shown around the country and around the world. I mean, it was interesting that Scott and I ended up in USA Today when the chicken ordinance passed. You know, I didn't expect that to go there. So you never know where these, um, where these types of things are going to reside and who's going to pick up that showcases that Cheyenne actually uh, cared about itself. So as far as, you know, I'm sure that I don't have the votes to carry this and, you know, there might be amendments coming forward and we'll deal with that at the time. But that was the groundwork that I put into uh, why the... Uh, kind and generous is taken away from compassion and it's uh, basically down to uh, uh, the root instead of the tree. Thank you. Is there, are there any other discussions? Madam Mayor. Mr. Shainer. I wanted to let the sponsor speak and have an opportunity to talk uh, before I made my remarks because I, I wasn't in on the discussions when this was drafted and what I'm, what I'm very disappointed about from the get-go is that there's been multiple opportunities to apologize 
for those very unkind derogatory remarks that were made in the newspaper. And that hasn't been done. Um, and so not only were those remarks in and of themselves uh, extremely ironic, uh, but the fact that there hasn't been any effort to uh, take those back and apologize just really to me goes to the crux of, of the issue. And that is this governing body has no business making morality proclamations from this dais. We are not the city's moral police, uh, and nor should we ever be. Other issues I have uh, with this proposal, the um, mention of Wallet Hub ranking us very high, fourth in the country, in terms of charitable contributions. You know, we run the second largest volunteer run uh, event in the country, that is Cheyenne Frontier Days. Uh, our Botanic Gardens is run by thousands of volunteers who have managed to sustain a Botanic Gardens um, for a size of our community, uh, premier in the country. And so to suggest through this ordinance that uh, the elected officials of a community of that nature uh, in this state somehow think uh, our, our citizens need to be more kind and more generous is uh, untenable to me. And lastly, uh, the word generous, uh, I don't believe that's my job as a councilman to be generous with taxpayer dollars. Uh, it's other people's money. I got elected to be prudent and strategic with those funds, not generous. Uh, so I can't agree to that term either. And because of those reasons, I'll be a no vote. Thank you. Are there any other comments by council? Any other comments? Well, saying know, that, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm Mr. sorry, Cook? Mayor, through Please. you. You know, I've, I've really, I've, I've struggled with this over the last handful of days. Um, I share a lot of the concerns of my colleagues that have, have mentioned that they're not in favor of this. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's a resolution. It's a, it's a statement of opinion. Um, you know, and I, I've read this thing probably 50 times since last week, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, I haven't heard from one single person, um, whether it be texts, calls, emails, whatever, that we've heard from, you know, the, the six years that I've been on the dais every time we've ever talked about something like this. I haven't heard from a single person that said that that they didn't, agree with this um, it's a statement of opinion and the sponsors in the sponsors own words it's a it's a fluff piece um, I really don't think it is it is um, um, you know tying us into where you know we're, we're committed to really do anything and and to be quite honest um, as evidenced by other you know other things on the uh, uh, agenda tonight we need to move past we need to move past this and we we definitely have bigger fish to fry um, I think this is a worthy discussion I think it is something that should be recognized that our city is is a generous city um, I do take a little a little bit of umbrage with the fact that um, you know the last whereas we're talking about the, the governing body is committed to speaking acting and lead out leading out of kindness and generosity I mean, look, when I took office, um, I took the code of ethics that I signed and adhered to very seriously. And I feel, frankly, that that does um, bind us already. But, frankly, I'm going to support this tonight. I know the sponsor didn't expect that. <laughs> um, and, and whether you call me an a-hole in the newspaper or not, I don't really care. Um, I've... I've I've been called worse by better, I guess, you know, really the way that, you know, the, the way that shakes out. But uh, I think I think we need to support this. We need to move on, acknowledge that we live in a great city and get to some of the bigger issues that we have confronting us. That's all. Thank you. Are there other comments by council? Okay, I'm going to, uh, if you will, I... Um, was originally on the record as supporting this for essentially trying to probably take the easy way out of just getting this done and over with because as I meet with mayors all over the world and country we are a generous community 
and uh, I have listened to um, not only the comments up here on the dais, but unlike you, Councilman Cook, I have gotten several emails with people saying that this is a waste of council time, this is not within the purview of what council should be doing, and furthermore, within a period of time, through social media and other comments from the sponsor, there continues to be bullying on this, on this, on this issue. And I take such pride in being a mayor of Cheyenne where we are not part of the local or the, the national politics, where if I don't believe in your viewpoint, well then you're a name or I'm going to label you or I'm going to peg you if you don't believe and vote the way that I'm going to. And so I have come to terms with, I'm not going to be bullied into a vote. I'm not going to stand by I'm an a-hole if I vote against this resolution because I don't need a piece of paper to tell me that I am the mayor of the best city in the country that is extremely generous of its time and its resources. And I have to agree, how do we, how do we, how do we define generosity? You know, when there are infrastructure needs, you, you look on our, on our agenda today, we're talking about major issues. And I'm sorry, but a stormwater system, how are we generous with that? Am I kind if I have to let an employee go because he or she showed up on the workplace in an unsafe situation? How do we measure that? And so while I was essentially a yes vote um, to go along, to get along, because yes, we are, I, I have changed my vote. I, I am a no, and I wanted uh, council to um, understand why. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 May I see a show of hands, please? One, two, three, four. All those opposed? No. One, two, three, four. It passes. Excuse me, it fails. So for clarification, it failed on a tie vote. Next item is number 16D on page 3, Agreement between the City of Cheyenne and FCI Constructors of Wyoming Limited Liability Company for the Pre-Construction and Construction Phase Services for Cheyenne Municipal Courts Building, 1% Specific Purpose Sales Tax. All right. Discussion by the public on this matter. <coughs> Discussion by the public. Madam Mayor, City Council members, uh, my name is Joe Doherty. Uh, I was not at Finance Committee like Mr. Laybourne and uh, was not able to download the backup documentation from this, from the city's web page. I don't know whether that was my fault or yours. Uh, I'm wondering if it would be possible f for, for someone to share a little bit about the scope of services and the uh, financial commitments connected with this agreement. Yes, we'll provide a quick overview. If uh, Ms. Ms. Nemechek, if you would. Vicki Nemechek, Public Works. This is a um, to hire a CMAR for um, for the municipal court. Um, it does the uh, funds that are involved are. And that's construction manager at risk. Construction manager at risk. Are $21,485 um, for the, the CMAR's fee for the pre-construction services. And the payment... Um, the construction service fee compensation, the stipulated maximum fee for construction phase services is one million two hundred forty six thousand forty three dollars. Okay, thank you. Other discussion by the public? If I could just in the way of, of uh, clarification can you explain to me what the scope of services is, which is a very small amount for pre-construction? Thank 
you. I, I believe we have somebody from FCI who will be able to answer that question for you. Brennan Munns with FCI Constructors. Um, to give you an idea, pre-construction is essentially all the budgeting of front work to get to a GMP uh, on the project. Um, it will be sitting with the design team in the city to get to the point where the design is complete um, and work with also subcontractors to get to those budgets as well. Um, at this point, the contract is only uh, authorizing the $21,000 uh, in fees. The stipulated maximum that was there will be included within the GMP at a later date. So at this point in time, it is just for pre-construction services. Um, it's being approved. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mr. Chair, Griffith. Noel Griffith, the architect for the project. Uh, FCI will be with us from now until the completion of the design and the working drawings. At approximately 50% of that, they will be giving you a GMP on the project, telling you what the maximum will be that we will spend on this project. Uh, right now, I can tell you that it is imperative that we have them on board as soon as we can. Uh, we will use them if this passes tonight or when it passes tonight, tomorrow morning. We need it that badly. Uh, we have uh, issues that on the 29th we will be giving them information uh, about the project, both floor plans and elevations, and on the 15th, a design meeting. So they are imperative to us in a very timely manner. Thank you. Other questions of FCI, I believe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a brief question to FCI. Yes. Through you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for the explanation. I'm trying to get my head wrapped around. Um, right now, we're going to put the total construction budget of roughly ten and a half million right. in this initial agreement. How do we get to the GMP from here going forward? Is it just a matter of like drilling in to get more specific as we move forward? And then like, at what point do we nail down that GMP? So when we first get the drawings from Noel here next week, I will start budgeting it out and we'll get to a point, we'll see where, they're, where they stand. Um, when we get to an agreed point, 50% CDs, we'll go out and we'll get budgets, we'll put the budgets together. We will come back to you with a with basically a contract amendment that says here's where the number is and here's where this is where it sits, um, and then you will have to vote on it again to approve it and put it into the contract. Okay, and Madam Mayor, through you, Mr. It, just and I won't hold you to specifics on this by any means, but just from your practice, how close in terms of like percentage over or under does the GMP come in at related to the initial total construction budget? Typically, and all the ones that we've done lately have all come in under budget, as long as there's been no major scope changes by the client, um, usually within a couple percent at the most. Great. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ma Madam Mayor. Mr. Case. Just a very quick question, and I presume the answer is yes, but I don't want to speak for you. Will there be value engineering put into <coughs> this scope in terms of, I, I, there's, Ten and a half million. We all know that nine million is the budget. We're going to have to come up with a million and a half elsewhere to fill that back uh, that gap. Correct. And if we can get VE services along with that within this, is that in yes. the scope? Yes. So that and, and that's part of the process as we move through it. Um, instead of getting to a point when your your documents are complete and we put a number to it, where where Noel's at at this point in time, we'll start putting numbers to it now so that we can work to those budgets. Uh, and make the design complete and not have to do as much VE. But if we have to, we can. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Okay, hearing none, uh, this is Mr. Case. Madam Mayor, the motion to approve at Finance Committee failed. Therefore, there is no recommendation on this item. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. <coughs> moved by Mr. Roybal, seconded by Mr. Case. Discussion by Council. Madam Mayor. Mr. Case. I move to amend by substitute, dated 10 18 Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded, moved by Mr. Case, seconded by Mr. Johnson to uh, move forward with the substitute. Discussion by public. Discussion by oh, Ms. Nemechek. Vicki Nemechek, Public Works. The sub substitute um, does two things, actually. It um, does put in the construction costs 
um, on the table on the first page, one of 37. So it does add those construction costs, the first floor being $6.4 million, the second floor being $4,138,750 for a total construction budget, and this is construction only, of $10,538,750. It also, uh, I've also attached Exhibit A, which is the CMAR fee proposal, and Exhibit B, which is the CMAR fee structure. Thank you for that explanation. Other questions of Ms. Nemechek? Just Mr. Johnson? One. Okay, so last week I knew I caught it because we talked about the 41 page document. So, how is it page one of 37 on the front page and then the next one says two of 41? So, is the page wrong? I know that's just a no. technicality, but I just wanted to make sure that I was, everything was in sync. There are, in fact, 41 pages. So the first page is the only one that says one of 37. <laughs> My mistake. Well, I haven't noted that's one of 42. Yeah, Carol. Says, Through you, Madam Mayor, I think the exhibits are renumbered on their own, so they're not in the total that's that they're attachments. Okay. So like exhibit A is page 1 through 4, exhibit B is page 1 through 12 or whatever. So those are additions to the initial contract of page 41. So it's, it's been done different ways. <laughs> Vicki Nemechek, Public Works, if I may, that, that is simply my mistake. I pulled this page up, <coughs> this um, page one, and I redid all of the information on the front, and I did not renumber that page like I did on the last one. So <coughs> it's just simply an administrative error on my part. Thank you. Any other questions by council? <coughs> Any questions by council? Um, Madam Mayor, it's not necessarily a, a question, just, just more or less a, a comment. Um, you know, I've done a, I've, uh, done a lot of research um, in the last several weeks on this, as, as most of us have, you know, regarding this entire press this entire process CMAR process and specifically on uh, FCI as it relates to uh, this particular project and I'm I'm convinced frankly you know just by looking at the, the scope of the the projects that they have done uh, that are very similar to to our project whether it be uh, other courthouses or things of that nature um, you know they did excellent work for us i think most of us up here would say that they did excellent work for us uh, as a cmar on the uh, the transfer station um you know that came in budgetarily right where it needed to be i felt like um, they are perfectly you know more than capable of keeping us where we need to be cost wise and working with the architects to uh to answer the questions that we need to have answered in order to keep this budgetarily where it should be. Um, they have shown a, a, a very clear track re record, in my opinion. Again, um, you know, their their expertise, I think, is, is second to none. They are right here. I think there are a lot of things. I mean, their office is basically less than a mile away from the, from the project. There are a lot of things to like about uh, having them be the CMR, CMAR for this project. Um, frankly, this is a project that we can't get wrong. And I feel comfortable with their, with their expertise and their ability on other projects they've done for the city of Cheyenne to bring us in uh, within, if not under budget. Um, I certainly plan on supporting this tonight. I do agree with, uh, with Mr. Griffith that we need to get moving. You know, the, the time now, I mean, every every month, every day that we wait, every month we lose $50,000. Um, we need to get going. You know, we've told them we want a second floor. They're uh, designing a, a second floor, floor shell out for us. Um, we've, got to, we've got to let these folks do their job in order to uh, proceed with this project. That's... Uh, that's what I have, and I, as I said, I plan on supporting this tonight. Thank you. Other discussion by council? <coughs> Other discussion by council? Madam Mayor, just a brief comment. 
Mr. Keith. Um, Mr. Reed, I just appreciate the folks uh, from, from FCI as well as Noel Griffith taking some time last week to help me understand exactly what we're doing here. I know there were some um, missed shots last week. We got through them, and, and I think I agree with my colleague, uh, Mr. Cook. This is time to move forward and get this project going. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments by council? Further comments by council? All right, hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Madam Mayor. Oh, oh, sorry. That was the amendment. Okay, now we are back on the main motion. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of the main motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Main motion passes. Next item is number 19A on page 4. Appointment of Alexis Art, Maggie Black, Ashen Doty, Darby Downham, Reagan Downham, Dylan Furtick, Julia Horst, Kieran Lagren, Marie Lucas, Emily Lucero, Lars Quinlevin, Kenitra Shanks, Dominique Singleton, and Marty Young to the 2018-2019 Mayor's Youth Council. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the public on this? Ms. Spires was ill tonight. She oversees that she was unable to be here. Um, as this is uh, discussion by council? Any discussion by council? Okay, as these are mayoral appointees, I cannot vote. So all those in favor of these appointments, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. May I have a motion? Oh, I needed a motion. I'm sorry. So motion moved. to approve. Second. Thank you. Second. Mr. So Roybal, Mr. Luna, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Report from the Cheyenne Animal Shelter Board pursuant to resolution number 5953. Thank you. Welcome. Madam Mayor, I'm Randy Reed, the attorney for the Cheyenne Animal Shelter. I'm here to provide a, a brief update on the council's resolution that was passed on October 8th of this year, resolution number 5923. Uh, that resolution required the uh, city attorney and the, and the council for the Shannon Animal Shelter to propose an amendment to the shelter contract that added the three directives set forth in the resolution. Uh, city attorney Hackle and I have done that, uh, and the proposed contract amendment was actually item 17A, I believe, on today's agenda. Um, that matter was referred to the Finance Committee. Uh, the resolution also required the city attorney and myself as counsel for the animal shelter to present a plan on how the three directives contained within the resolution uh, will be implemented. Uh, uh, city attorney Hackle and myself have provided the mayor and the city council with our memo. Um, the most important part of that memo is the attachment, which is the uh, report from the Shan Animal Shelter Board. Uh, on the steps that it's taken so far to uh, get the matters mentioned in the resolution in place. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, Tammy Mays from the Shan Animal Shelter is all, also here. The president of the board is also here to answer questions. Thank you. Are there questions of Mr. Reed? Questions or comments um, of Mr. Reed? Mr. Cook? Mayor, I, yeah, uh, through yourself, I, I guess either to uh, Mr. Reed or maybe a, attorney hackle who i mean whoever feels that they can most adequately answer this question but i guess mr reed my the way i, I and i'm referring to you to to your letter or the the report um and specifically i'm just i'm i'm on page four four or five of the entire document but it would be page one of 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 the, of the report um and i wanted to make sure i read something correctly at the bottom of uh, uh, point number two, where you refer to, uh, I believe the language is costs for regularly scheduled audits um, to be included in the, the Shine Animal Shelter budget for the city contract. I guess I just want to be clear, Mr. Reed, if, if, if it is the intent of the Animal Shelter Board, is that um, an additional amount on top of the the amount that they're going to request in their budget or is that going to be coming out of the amount that is already in their budget i'm just wondering if, if that is going to be an additional cost to the, to the city on top of what is already budget or what they might request i'm just trying to ascertain where that lives M madam mayor through you uh councilman cook um, my understanding, uh, first of all, I'm not the author of the of the okay. Shan Animal Shelter report, uh, but my understanding. You can certainly let whoever and, answer. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, in a, in a, if I'm wrong, Ms. Mays will correct me, but uh, uh, I believe that the intent of the Shan Animal Shelter Board is uh, that the additional cost to uh, implement these matters would be, uh, or the cost would be uh, uh, something that they would seek to include uh, in in the next round of contract renewals and negotiations. Okay. Okay. That answers my question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments of Mr. Reed? Madam Mr. Mayor, Shainer? through you, um, and Mr. Reed, I know you just mentioned you're not the author of this, um, but when I when I was initially taken aback by the, um, on page one, where you talk about the annual governance training for the CAS board, how that, that sentence, if none are available, we will forward the cost of training to the city for reimbursement. Right. Um, so there's this direct sort of we will ask the city for reimbursement for governance training, but then when we get into the cost of audit, it says costs will regularly scheduled audits to be included in the CAS budget for the city contract. Uh, and then there's that sort of catch-all phrase at the bottom that the board will revisit total costs of services to governmental agencies, to me, which would include the county, to include attorney's fees, training costs, consultant costs, and other expenses incurred in the implementation of the directives set forth in this resolution. So what I struggle with is the explicit um, intent to bill the city, but then at the end it says you will look at the budget holistically and bill all governmental agencies, so the county as well. Curious why there's, at least to me, there appears to be some dissonance in how these costs are going to be recouped. Sure, Madam Mayor, through you. Um, frankly, that may be a question better answered by the shelter folks, um, but my understanding, again, is that the costs of implementing these director, the directives um, are, are likely to be spread among the governmental agencies for which the shelter provides services. Um, and I agree, maybe that isn't so clear in this document. And again, if I'm wrong about that, um, I'm, I'm I'm happy to have Ms. Mays clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Ma Madam Mayor. Mr. Case. Um, just to briefly, in item 17C, which is on our consent agenda for this evening, is that contract piece for the animal shelter, which is being referred to finance. I suspect we'll have an opportunity to speak to those financial costs and, and explored for, for those components of of this resolution and if so are those things that can be brought forward um, madam mayor uh, councilman case i personally don't have knowledge of whether the costs have been explored and if they have what they found um, um so i would again defer to miss mays okay uh, yeah and i guess my preference would be just let's unpack that when we get the, to the contract rather than tonight that's all right with my colleagues. Thank yeah, you. Thank sense. you for the report. Yeah. Any other further questions? Okay, hearing none. Thank you. Announcement of public hearing to be held November 13, 2018 at 6 p.m. in City Council Chambers, 2101 O'Neill Avenue, Cheyenne, Wyoming, for a special malt beverage annual permit application filed with the City Clerk's Office for the City of Cheyenne, doing business at City of Cheyenne Civic Center, 510 West 20th Street, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Announcement that due to the Veterans Day holiday and city offices being closed on Monday, November 12, 2018, the regularly scheduled city council meeting will instead be held on Tuesday, November 13, 2018 at 6 p.m. in city council chambers, 2101 O'Neill Avenue, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Other business? Thank you. Other business by the public, Mr. Mason. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Mayor, uh, City Council members. I came tonight to give an update to where the MPO is at for updating um, our plan for Del Range and Lincoln Way, plus also um, the status of the Whitney Road plan. The Whitney Road plan is studying Whitney Road from US 30 North to Story Boulevard, and the Del Range and US 30 plan is studying both of those corridors from College Drive eastward. Uh, Del Range intersects US 30 um, with near the Cheyenne Hills Church and 
and US 30 from college to the railroad overpass at Archer, uh, near the Archer interchange with I-25. Um, the status of those plans, Whitney Road uh, um, started in February of 2017. Um, Mr. Tom Cobb, who worked for ABI, um, was the project manager. He now works for the MPO office, and he's in the uh, process of finishing up that plan, um, which should be uh, just within a couple of weeks. Um, the plan for Whitney Road from US 30, the story is, is uh, looking at the corridor, um, how wide the corridor should be um, built to to handle future traffic, and what alignment it takes as it goes up the hill near the old Whit Whitney Ranch. Um, it's also looking at the intersection of US 30 and also Del Range on how best to uh, rebuild them. The US 30 and Del Range plan um, is starting just this spring, June of 2018, with Kimley Horn. Um, so far, the project has had um, one steering committee meeting and one public open house. And those corridors, those corridors plan are, are looking at also how they should be rebuilt and also um, how the major intersections that they have along those roads should be rebuilt. The project schedule for that um, is anticipated to be uh, completed by March of the coming year. Besides doing these projects um, to forecast um, how they should be rebuilt, some of these projects and pieces of the projects um, are programmed uh, for funding. First off, the Dale Range and US 30 intersection is uh, programmed um, to be funded um, probably no earlier than 2021. And more than likely, because it in, involves, of course, the reconstruction of US 30, uh, that specific project of re relocating Del Range intersection with US 30 may not happen until the entire US 30 corridor gets rebuilt. Um, but there is a possibility that it could happen on its own, and then the rest of US 30 would, would come at a later date. The second project that is funded is the reconstruction of Whitney Road between US 30, but not including the US 30 intersection, um, about 0.3 miles north to the Del Range intersection. And this project more likely would include the reconstruction of, of Del Range and, and Whitney Road. Both those projects, the reconstruction of Del Range US 30 and the Whitney Road reconstruction are funded uh, with the federal funds that the uh, MPO Policy Committee helps determine where those funds are spent. Um, and both of those projects are also in the county, therefore they'd be matched by the county. Then the other project, the big one is um, US 30 between College Drive to the railroad overpass at Archer. Um, YDOT has that program to be rebuilt in 2024. Um, we know there's issues and concerns, um, especially with the US 30 and Whitney intersection and the Del Range and Whitney intersection. Um, we'll be looking at those two intersections with the city, county, and YDOT to determine if there's something that can be done um, intermittently, intermittently, sorry, I'm not saying it right. <laughs> um, short term <laughs> before the big projects before the big projects come um i'm here to answer any other questions you might have thank you i'll, I'll just start in really quickly i did ask mr mason to come here tonight i know that we had um four really pretty serious accidents along 
you know, this area just in the last weekend. I was in contact today with our partners at YDOT, with our partners at the county, certainly with Mr. Mason, and we are um, all uh, pledging to get together here, in, especially once we get the crash data from the police department, once those reports are completed regarding the cause of those accidents, and looking at, again, kind of a stopgap measure. We've probably already heard from, you know, people are suggesting four-way stops, you know, lowering the speed limit. Um, in addition, I do want you to know that we've also been in uh, communication with the school district regarding Dakota Crossing and the changes that have been made with that. We're really working on the safe route to schools. Uh, City Engineer Amy Allen has been in conversation with the district to make sure that we essentially keep those kids off the highway, if you will, when it comes to making those crossings. So. Um, when we hear dates like 2022, 2024, please know that we are working very actively to get something um, resolved as quickly as possible for the time being. Mr. Case. If, if I may, I don't want to go out of protocol here, but I, this is music to my ears. Um, I, I've had a lot of reasons for wanting to run for city council, but this, these intersections in that corridor were basically the reasons that I raised my hand and said, we got to do something. And this is music to my ears. I know I've been in, in contact with Mr. Mason from the very beginning of my tenure here. We're working on it. We're making a plan. And I'm glad to see some stuff on paper. That's great to hear. I'm glad that uh, the county and the state are willing to sit down at the table as well to get some short-term solutions because I, I don't think it's something that we need to look at. I think it's something we need to commit to. Um, we, the, the activity is only increasing over there. And we really need to shine a spotlight on the fact we, we need to fix because safety is paramount and I believe we're failing those communities by not doing something in the short term. Any other comments or questions of Mr. Mason? Yeah, the, um, we have crash data and we are in the process now of collecting uh, the 24 hour counts, you know, the traffic that you know, averages out for, for a day and traffic is definitely increasing. It's, you know, in one year, it's gone up. So we're aware of the traffic increases. Um, we know of the crash increases. You know, crash history, um, in the past five years, um, of course, you never like to see a crash, but, but in the last five years on, on US 30 in Whitney, there were a total of 11. On Del Range in Whitney, there were a total of five. Um, we know of two crashes uh, Saturday on Whitney and US 30, and the same day, one at Whitney and Del Range. And that's really unusual, very unusual to have that many in one day, let alone spread out over years. <laughs> so we are on it. We'll be working with the city, county, and state to see if there's anything that can be done in the short term. Thank you so much, Mr. Mason. And, and if I might, Madam Mayor, just one brief comment. If any of the residents are here to speak to this issue tonight, um, please feel free to come up and do so. But I would be more than willing to take emails and phone calls. Um, I, I can be found on, on the city website and keep you all updated as to progress on these short term solutions. So thank you. All right, any other comments or issues to come before us from the public? I just had a comment on the actual topic. Oh, okay. So I guess it's unfortunate because I know when we did our Ward 3 meeting, you know, earlier in the spring, I had brought up this exact topic and I, you know, it just is unfortunate that it takes fatalities and massive amounts of property damage, which I was bringing up. And as Mr. Case said, he's been on since his term, but you know, we were uh, trying to make attempts to attack this earlier on in the year. And so, and it was said, okay, it's being looked into. So I'm just, you know, a little bit hesitant to say that the fact that we see 2021, 2022, and 24, that that actually is what's going to happen because we've been bringing it up for the last two years and we're just getting told, well, it's all part of the plan. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Don Edmonds, 7309 East Pershing Boulevard. I get to deal with this little problem every day. You got stupid drivers in Wyoming. 
you have people pull out in front of people. The problem is, is I don't care what you're going to do out there. The only thing that I can think you could do at uh, that intersection is to put a traffic light. And even then, it's not going to be done because I watch people out there blow traffic lights all the time in Cheyenne. I have sat at college and uh, Lincoln Way a couple of times not moving and have people honk behind me because I'm not moving and then ha stop me at the Mini Mart there, because, or the loafing jug, because they go, well, if I'd gone through there, that guy had T-boned me. And I said, yeah, I knew it. he wasn't going to stop. The problem about out there at that intersection is the fact that you have had allowed 800 homes to be built out there, and you're allowing another 600 homes to be being built out there on small, little, two-lane roads. That's your problem because you have all these people moving in out there with all this traffic <coughs> coming in, and there's been no planning for doing anything about it. And uh, because US 30 is uh, up about a mile east, west of there, goes from two lanes down to, or from four lanes down to two lanes. It was two lanes all the way, or if the four lanes was out to that way, that might help alleviate the problem, but the problem is it isn't. Pershing doesn't help much because Pershing for everybody's commitment on it, is a ho-dunk, third-class road. I don't know if you guys have ever been out there, but Pershing is a quagmire of city and county jurisdiction. Part of its city, part of its county, then part of its city again. Okay, this is going to cause a real major boondoggle out there when things have to be fixed or their jurisdiction or anything like that. Myself, personally, out where I live, I'm not going to stop for a city police officer. He wants to pull me over. I'm not going to stop. County sheriff, I'll stop. But as far as I'm concerned, where I live, I'm not going to recognize a police officer because I'm too far out in the county. But the thing about it is, what we're saying here is a lot of my neighbors feel the same way. And what we're trying to come across is, okay, this new division that you just allowed in, and I'll be honest with you, the, the Edwardsers are great about putting this thing in, but the only problem is there's totally going to be two exits in and out of that subdivision. One at Farthing and then one uh, dumping into Saddle Ridge. And they're going to have 400 some odd homes out there. That's a lot of people for two entries every day. The, that to me means that the city engineers hasn't been doing the proper planning on trying to make sure that stuff's out there. That's like uh, you guys have gone in on Taft and Pershing. You have it uh, fixed so that uh, the traffic coming down Taft taps the uh, the red lights so that if you're going on Pershing, you have to stop for the traffic coming down Taft. I remember living out there when Taft wasn't even there. Then it became a two-lane dirt road. When I say two lanes, I'm talking about two two ruts in the, in the dirt. Then it became a rough f dirt road. Then an improved four-lane or dirt road. And now it's a really nice paved road coming out there. But it didn't used to exist. And again, it, the the priorities seem to be kind of askew for what's going on, but it's just the idea that you know this this is kind of going on, and until you guys get out there and you actually get somebody out there that takes a good honest look, that's what's happening in the traffic patterns out there. I'm surprised there haven't been more accidents out there, because I watch people all the time, run those lights. As a matter, of, see, I drive that every day, three or four times a day. And I'll tell you what, there's times that, you know, it kind of scares me to be driving out there because of some of the fools that are driving on our city and county roads. Thank you. Thank you. Questions of Mr. Edmonds? Good thing, because he's already sitting down. All right. Any other comments? Good morning, or good, afternoon, good evening. Um, I would just like to also, Wendy Volk, sorry, 3918 Pioneer Avenue, wanted to just also reiterate that for 30 years, the Camp Still Christensen overpass has been in the planning process. 18 months ago, the voters did approve um, to have that passed. Um, and I would love to see traction on that project at the same speed that we're doing the Commons Park and the Municipal Court Building when that was also passed on the same six penny. Um, I think this, had we been pushing farther along on that, this would help alleviate the congestion that we're seeing and that could help lighten the load on those other arterial um, roads. So that was I wanted to share. Thank you. Any other discussions by the public? All right, discussion by council. Any other comments by council? Yes, Mr. Johnson. 
um, kind of following off of what um, Wendy said. I had this written Madam down Mayor, because of an article. Kind of an emergency. I have to go. Oh, thank you. So um, this uh, today in the USA Today, um, they had a feature in regards to uh, Wisconsin and tariffs. And so one of the um, interesting facets of that was um, the price of steel uh, going up with tariffs. Um, they had a, a person that actually built steel girders for bridges and farm equipment, and he was talking about how the tariffs had impacted um, the construction of what he does for a living with fabrication. So um, pretty much to follow up on her because of the USA Today, do we have any update? Because like um, we've discussed earlier with you know, $50,000 a month for the courthouse, what are we looking at as far as projections um, on movement with the Christensen Road? Thank you, Ms. Allen. Madam Mayor, through you, uh, we actually met today and we set a bid date of January 8th, if all can go well. Um, that will push us back probably into construction through 2020, but until we get the bids in and, and take a look at the schedule from the contractor. So our bid date today, looking at council meetings and everything else, is January 8th. Okay. Thank you. And, and to clarify, too, I mean, just because the voters passed something doesn't mean that we still, we still had to go through the financing portion of this and the design portion. And... and Unfortunately, these things, these things do take time. It, it, um, but but that is that is the latest schedule. Yeah. Uh, Madam Mayor, through you, and it is priority of the engineering department right now. Um, we met today, and we have uh, some of our new engineers. Well, one of our new engineers working on it, and so we're pushing it as much as we can. Yeah, I just read flagged okay. it because of that article. Thank you, and I'll and I'll clarify for the council. I've I've met with some of you, but I'm also in discussions with public works and with engineering, and that because we do have so we've got some very critical pieces, um, construction pieces coming online. The county has contracted with an individual to basically be a project manager, as an owner's representative. He's certified construction management, certified owner's repre representation of that and I believe that this is something that we really need so that we're not currently relying on the city engineer public works or city attorney to basically be overseeing these very large projects where we in fact have somebody that is working for us keeping us all up to date where we can go to for answers and so please know that uh, my office is working on that that position will probably be seen directly with the mayor's office which is also council not any one department so um, I'll certainly keep you all informed, but please know that we really want to do right by the taxpayers between the municipal building, Christensen, finishing up um, Civic Center Commons. We want to make sure that all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed when it comes to the budget, the financing, the project, and everything in line. So we are looking at that kind of um, contract here in the near future. All right. Any other comments or issues to come yes. from Council? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Johnson. Um, basically, um, this one's uh, kind of heart rendering, but at the same time, I'm really uh, happy for her. Uh, when um, I actually ran in 2012, I tried to run, um, but I came into the city clerk's office and she told me I hadn't uh, lived in my ward long enough. So I came back in 2014 and Carol uh, greeted me with a smile and told me, I've been waiting for this. And so, uh, <laughs> so not only did my dad inspire me to run, you know, by daring me, but uh, Carol was uh, there when it um, happened. So I found uh, three quotes that I uh, was happy to uh, hear uh, when Carol read them. Uh, resolution, and I apologize, I'm not going to do uh, section 2.2.1 of the UDC and the six prime meridian, but uh, <laughs> resolution uh, proclaiming uh, Purple Heart Day and as the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming to be a Purple Heart City. Ordinance, third reading, amendment section, 912090 skateboards and similar devices prohibited of chapter 9.2 offenses against property and title 9 of the public peace and welfare of the city of Cheyenne uh, referred to public cities that was a third reading on here and then of course the last one uh, when she read it uh, ordinance third reading amending section 6820 uh, keeping or slaughtering of certain animals restrictions within the city of chapter 6. Or, or excuse me 608 animal care and control regulations generally of title six animals of the code of the city of Cheyenne referred to the committee of the whole um, so just looking back at how much um, Carol has read into these documents and listening to 2.2.2.1 and every other thing that possibly imagine I was thinking of this when I saw her resignation of 
the things that when she actually read them to the record and they actually passed and I was like you know what a uh, better way to say that I appreciate everything you've done in your time with the city um, encouraging me to run um, encouraging me to stay as well as um, just being a, a fantastic employee and I respect your professionalism and all the um, things that you've taken your time to uh, telling me you know about you know electric fences and telling me about uh, when all of a sudden spitting on the sidewalk became part of the Spanish influenza and you know just um, <laughs> thousands and thousands of emails back and forth where you've actually given me the history of why these things were on and whether or not they were up to date and whether or not you actually thought that they had merit and if they should have stayed on city code and then listening to my point of view on countless topics over the last four years and so I do want to tell you I really appreciate uh, you and all you've done for me personally. Here, here. Thank you, Mayor. Retirement. Yes. Carol, did you, not that she's counting down, but she came into our, we always have a pre-meeting at 3 o'clock before these meetings, and she said four more meetings. Was that right? Mm -hmm. Four more meetings. So we have her for four more meetings. <laughs> All right. With there being no further business, we are adjourned.